The defense just called Officer Nicole McKenzie. You'll remember she was a prosecution witness uh, who testified about the medical response to George Floyd on May 25th. She talked a little bit in that testimony uh, while being questioned about excited delirium. Ultimately, the prosecution objected. They didn't continue with that line of questioning, but the defense then asked to call her as their own witness. And let's have you state and spell so your we're going to see how this question goes report. with Nicole McKenzie, but we are expecting to hear her talk about excited delirium today. K-E-N-Z-I-E. Mr. Nelson. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Ms. McKenzie. Morning. Officer. Officer, I apologize. I, I'm sorry. Um, you've previously testified in this case, correct? I have. And uh, just to refresh the jury's recollection, what is your uh, role again with the Minneapolis Police Department? I'm the medical support coordinator for the department. Okay. And in terms of... Did you take your mask down? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, in terms of the training that you provide to officers, uh, fair to say that the training consists of both academy training and uh, veteran officer training called in-service. Yes, sir. And in terms of uh, the training that your department provides, does your department provide excited delirium training to officers in the academy? In the academy, yes. And that's not something that routinely is given to the veteran officers? Correct. All right. Now, you understand that uh, Officer Lane, who is a part of this case, recently attended the academy? Correct, yes. And um, he would have seen the materials that the Minneapolis Police Department provided relevant to excited delirium? Yes, sir. And you've had an opportunity and you've reviewed the PowerPoint presentations that are prepared in that regard? I have. Do you want the instruction? Members of the jury, uh, you're about to receive evidence regarding excited delirium training that was received by Officer Lane at the police academy. This is being offered for the limited purpose of explaining why he used the phrase excited delirium on May 25th, 2020, and what that meant to him. This is not being offered as a state of mind or knowledge of the defendant, since we have no indication in the record that this defendant, Mr. Chauvin, uh, took this training. So accept it only for that limited purpose regarding Officer Lane. Mr. Nelson. Thank you. So just uh, going to show you, uh, this has been pre-marked as Exhibit 1053. Does this appear to be the uh, training materials the Minneapolis Police Department provides for officers, cadets in the academy? It does. Um, does it, and just skipping through, does this appear to be a accurate uh, copy of that? It appears to be so. And I'll just kind of scan through fast. To be pretty much the entirety of that training? It looks like it, yes. Okay. And um, can you just describe for the jury generally what excited delirium is as you train it? Certainly. It's uh, a condition that's a combination of a variety of different medical um, uh, issues that are happening at the same time. This could be something like psychosis. Um, um, I'm sorry. Um, uh, agitated, uh, agitated delirium. Um, it could be uh, a pressurized speech, incoherent speech, um, superhuman strength, hyperthermia. They could all be present. And um, does the Minneapolis Police Department train cadets? What types of things cause excited delirium? In a general sense, yes. It's a combination of uh, pre-existing factors. It could be cardiovascular disease, um, also illicit drug use, and also mental health um, diagnoses. Okay. And in terms of um, the uh, signs that officers are trained to look for, could you describe what those are? Yeah, we do use an acronym um, to correlate with that, and we use the acronym of not a crime. 
Um, so there's a, a varying different things you might see if somebody's presenting with excited delirium. Um, like the person, because they are experiencing um, hyperthermia, meaning excessive temperature, uh, they might be removing their clothing, they might be speaking incoherently. Um, whether it's a bystander or the caller, uh, they might describe that the person had just snapped. Um, it, and if I could reference my materials, I can go through a little more in detail. Um, so for purposes and subject to the state's objection, the, the defense moves to introduce Exhibit 1053. Subject to the court's rulings, uh, 1053 is received. Uh, you see uh, the first uh, letter of your acronym, not a crime, before you? Yes. And um, what does that stand for? Uh, the patient might present as naked or sweating, removing their clothing. Okay. And the second slide being, or excuse me, the next uh, letter being O? Yes, and that's objects, exhibiting violence towards objects. Okay. T? Is tough and unstoppable. And that's what you described as like superhuman strength? Yes, sir. A? The onset is acute. What does that and, mean? And that's where somebody will say the patient just snapped. So it's rapid or fast? Right. C? Uh, the patient is confused. Might be speaking incoherently. R? Resistant. And define that? Um, that the person will likely not be able to, uh, they don't have the capability about them to respond to commands um, to comply. Okay. And I? Incoherent. And how would you define incoherent in this sense? Um, it's, if somebody's like experiencing some level of psychosis, they might be talking about complete nonsense. Their words just don't even make sense. Um, and there's really no dialogue you can have with them, meaningful dialogue you can have with the person. Okay. And M? Uh, that'd be mental health. The person uh, or callers have some kind of information that leads to believe there's some mental health issues going on. And E? And that EMS should be requested early. It's fair to say that if an officer uh, suspects um, excited delirium as occurring with a suspect, there are certain steps that they are encouraged to do, correct? Correct. Um, can you define what an officer should do if they encounter a suspect they suspect is suffering from excited delirium? Uh, definitely get more resources started because you might need more resources than you would think. And then also having EMS stage um, at a safe distance away until the situation is under control. And obviously um, attempt to control the subject? Correct. Through physical restraint? Yes. Uh, it's fair to say that once a person is in handcuffs under the excited delirium, uh, you train officers to put that suspect in the recovery position, agreed? Correct. And what would be the purpose of um, bringing EMS on scene? Uh, because people that are experiencing the excited delirium syndrome, uh, they can rapidly go into cardiac arrest. And that's how you train uh, Minneapolis police cadets, correct? Correct. Now, again, as far as veteran officers, they may not see this particular training materials, correct? They would not. And But is, is excited delirium a subject that is discussed in in-service trainings generally? It has been in the past, but that was not with the medical support team. And so in terms of use of force or other questions? Or other areas of training? Correct. Okay. Um, Your Honor, I have no further questions. Mr. Frank. Thank you, Your Honor. Officer McKenzie, I have just a few follow up questions for you. Um, so, the, the basic training. Uh, an excited delirium with cadets or recruits um, is to is what to look for. Correct. And then secondly, what things they can do. Correct. And one of the things that they are told to do is to put the person in the side recovery position, correct? That is correct. And that's to help facilitate breathing. Yes. 
because excited delirium, if it exists, uh, could compromise proper breathing. It, absolutely, yes. And officers, uh, both in the academy and veteran officers, are trained on CPR. Yes. And so um, they are also trained that they have an obligation if someone becomes pulseless or unresponsive to initiate measures such as CPR. Yes, sir. And that would be true of, as I said, veteran officers as well, correct? Correct. It's our policy. And um, cadets like uh, Officer Lane received CPR training, correct? Yes, sir. And an officer like uh, Mr. Chauvin would have received CPR training on a regular basis. Yes. You were asked about the acronym uh, to help identify potential markers of this condition? Yes. Um, would you um, defer to an emergency room doctor uh, on whether someone is actually experiencing excited delirium? Absolutely. It's not our place to diagnose that. I have nothing further here. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.